Good morning, everybody. What a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Good morning. Once again, God has kept us safe another week. Allowed us to assemble ourselves for the studying of his word. We pray, amen, that this word will bless your soul on this day. Um, that our coming will not be in vain. But you will take part in this studying of God's word as we come for this period of study. Pray that God open our hearts, our minds, and even our understanding as we study together this word. We greet him. Amen. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sister and brother clergy, deacon and deaconess, to minister's wives, all of the minister's wives who include my wife, all of God's children. We are grateful and thankful for this rich opportunity that God has afforded us with that we can share together um, in another Sunday school setting. Opportunity to study the word of God. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you for this rich opportunity that you have afforded us with, that we have the opportunity to share in, in the study of your word. Lord, as we study this word together, let not our coming be in vain, but let this word be richly received by your people, so much so that it accomplishes that which you send it to do. Lord, and if, as we go from, from this place, let us walk in the newness of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we come for this lesson. We are in the last quarter of 2021. The year has, has flown by. If you've been busy, it has flown by. And if it seems slow to you, it's because you've not been busy. So here we are in October, today's date, October 17, 2021, lesson number three in this third and final quarter of this year. The subject of this lesson, I shall be released. I shall be released. The background passage, Psalms 107. The print passages, Psalms 107, verses 1 through 9 and 39 through 43. The key verse. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Amen. That's our key verse. It's Psalm 107 and verse 6. Uh, somebody perhaps will join this summons and say it. When then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And we're going to go directly, amen, to the lesson without a whole lot of, um, amen, my own personal input. Uh, we're going to the introduction of this lesson and pray that you go with us. For those of you who may not have a Sunday school book, the lesson comes from Psalms 107. 107, and I'll give you those outlines as we do those outlines. But right now we are going to do the introduction, and I pray that um, this blesses your soul. I pray that this will bless your soul as we, amen, study together. The introduction says, giving thanks to one who has done something for us is a skill that we never quite master. Hmm. Despite the fact that most of us are taught early on by our parents and others the necessity to be polite by saying thank you, please, and you're welcome, there are moments and times in which we forget to do so. Amen. Let me, let me pause in my reading just to, to comment. It's so rare, very rare, amen, in this day and time to hear people saying thank you and please and you're welcome. We've, we've gotten away from, amen, uh, that upbringing. Um, back to reading. Uh, moreover, saying thanks is not just about being polite but having gratefulness at the moral center of one's being. This psalm uses an, an off 
often re referenced line in his opening line. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. This line appearing in multiple places in the canon give rationale for God's praise. Psalm 106 and 1, Psalms 118 and 1, and Psalm 136 and 1 all begin with this line, amen, simply God is good. For those who have gratefulness at the center of their being, this is not a difficult acknowledgement. However, for the one who believes that somehow or some way that God's goodness is not responsible for their well-being, he or she may not give thanks because it is not a part of who they are, my Lord. We can only consistently do that which is a part of who we are intrinsically. Thanks, therefore, is not just a one-time act. But in the case of God, something that we are to engage continually because his blessings are continuous. The psalmist acknowledges the many ways that God has been good to a variety of people. It is those who have tasted the goodness of God who are to give him thanks, my Lord. They have known deliverance and have been released from any number of things, they are, we are to give thanks. Amen? Think about it. That's, that's our introduction for today's lesson as we talk about we shall be released. Um, this psalm talks about, amen, uh, um, giving God praise because he is good. Think about it. List the times of life for which God has brought you from bondage to liberation. Verses 4, 6, 10, 17, and 23. What should be the response of those, amen, liberated? Why? Numerate the wonderful works of God. As the psalm said, count your blessings one by one. Count your blessings and see what the Lord has done. That's, that's amen, the introduction to this lesson. Praising God because of his blessing. The serpent says, I shall be released. I shall be released. Let's look at this, this lesson. Psalm 107, um, verses 1, 2, and 3. Verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, the steadfast love of God. Steadfast. When we think about steadfast, we, we think about, amen, mm, something that is, is nailed down. Something that, that's... that's Mm. that doesn't change, something that does not move. So we can talk about the steadfast love of God, that it does not change, it does not move. Amen. Let's look at this outline, the steadfast love of God, Psalms 107, verses 1, 2, and 3. Verse 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. This, this outline says steadfast love. Let's go back to verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let let, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now, now, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Redeemed mean that, that God has snatched you back. He has saved you from, amen, being destroyed by the enemy. He has purchased you back from Satan. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy. And that's a word that, that I often talk about. His mercy endures forever. His mercy. Let's talk about that real brief. Steadfast. Mercy, as, as most of you know in the sign of my voice, mercy is when God withholds the punishment that we so rightfully deserve for our wrongdoing. He doesn't, he doesn't allow justice, justice to rain down on us because of his steadfast love. 
his steadfast love. We ought to tell him thank you for his goodness, for his mercy, his mercy, his mercy. As Jeremiah remind us that mercy, every time you wake up, is new. That mercy is new every morning. Because if Jester deals with you, amen, you won't make it through the night. But God reign thy mercy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Mm. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north to south and from the south. He has redeemed them. He has purchased. He has, and, and here's a word that, that most of us um, are familiar with. He has paid our bond. That's what redeem is. He has paid our bond. Most of, most of us are familiar with, amen, being in jail or in prison. And Deacon Pierce, Deacon Pierce. He has, he has, he has, Redeemed us. He has paid the bond. Uh, when one is in, in prison, usually the judge sets a bond. Uh, Satan had us in prison, and Jesus paid the bond. It's called redemption. It's called redemption. Um, let's look at the let's look at the Amen exposition to this outline to know it. We are in Psalm 107. Verses 1 through 3. And here's, what, here's, here's how this know it reads. The exposition to this outline. Psalm 107 represents the beginning of book 5 within Psalms. Psalm 106 is the conclusion of book 4. Both of these psalms begin with the same words. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endureth forever. Um, and this, this may point to 107 being a response or a type, a continuation. Whereas 106 recounts Israel's experience with Yahweh up to the present moment and ultimately asks for his deliverance from what is assumed to be the Babylonian bondage. Now, that, that was, there's two things that um, readers say this less a point to. One is being delivered from, amen, the Babylonian captivity. And in reference, some of this, amen, points to, amen, being delivered out of Egypt. Being delivered out of Egypt. But non, nonetheless, the steadfast love of God is, is unchangeable. Let, let, let me read on. Psalm 107 takes a different approach, even as both begin with, an imperative to praise the Lord. Amen. 107 is clear that the praise is for deliverance that has previously taken place. Pause. Let me, let me pause. Praise. That's, that's, that fits all of us. This says they praise for deliverance. God has delivered us. He has delivered us, amen, from a lot of stuff. We praise God, Deacon Gross, because of what he has done for us. And if God has ever done anything for you, then you owe him praise as well. That's, that's what this psalm is about. They are praising God. The psalm is, amen, right as he praises God for God's deliverance. Deliverance from, from the Babylonian uh, bondage or either from deliverance from the Egyptian bondage. And as we read this lesson, the more you read this lesson, the more it sounds like it is from the, the amen, Egyptian bondage because they go through the wilderness. Um, but even you and me, if God, whatever God has blessed us with and done for us, we owe him praise. We owe him praise. Um, combine these two psalms, point to the truth that it is also appropriate to praise God while one awaits deliverance and especially after one has been redeemed. Mm. What, what's the difference in deliverance and being redeemed? What is the difference? He says, and let me read that sentence again. Combine these two psalms, 
come by these two songs point to the truth that it is also appropriate to praise God why we why one awaits deliverance and especially after one has been redeemed. Uh, amen. The redeem, yes, sir, you want to say? Redeem means to purchase or to buy back. Amen. Deliverance, deliverance, amen, is to be saved from whatever you are in. Deliver, deliverance. I've been, I've been redeemed. When we talk about I've been redeemed, sister and brother, we are talking about the fact that God paid the bond. And I don't want to get bogged down, but you see, when Adam, when Adam sinned in the garden, sin entered the world. And that means that Satan now was in charge and all men come in the world, came into the world as sinners under the offices of Satan because Satan was in charge and is still in charge of the world. So in order to undo some of what Adam gave to Satan, God comes, amen, becomes flesh, come, becomes flesh in order that he can bow us back. God, amen, set the bond for our redemption. And that bond that God set was the blood, the blood shedding of an innocent man. So the only man who could do that would be Jesus. So he comes and, and pays the bond that God set to have us, amen, bought and delivered, amen. He, he paid the price and then he delivered. Then he delivered us. Mm. Praise given, I'm back reading. Praise given to God is based on two terms that should be explicated before we go further in this, in this study. In verse 1, God is called good. Greek philosopher Plato in the book The Republic explained what he calls the form of the good. The good is the highest form imaginable. It is perfect, eternal, and changeless. Those three words, those three words, if you want to highlight them, that gives us the essence of who God is. God is, and, and I'll keep reading, God is perfect, he's eternal, and he is changeless. Whereas, I'm reading, whereas he does not assign divinity to this form. Later, Christian theologians would state that the good is that which is God. God being he who is perfect, eternal, and changes, and that's what that's what we just said. Um, if you want to know how, who God is or how God is, those that's how you describe Him. That's how this summons describe Him. As a matter of fact, that He's perfect, and if He's perfect, perfect means that um, He is without error. He makes no error. Uh, eternal, uh, eternal. We know not where that is. We know that. From, from eternity to eternity is God. Then there's change, change. God never changes. That's one of the uh, um, characteristics. Um, mm. That is these three words. When you talk about the essence of God that Christ came into the world to reveal, you will look at these three words at least, and that, that could be more, but these three at least. Uh, he's perfect, he's eternal, and he's changing. When we talk about eternal, eternal, we talk about everlasting. If we are able to hold these two in tension, then it is easy to see that, to say that God is good is redundant because by the very definition of God, he would have to be good because he is all mm, that good entails. Praise the Lord because he is himself, and he is good. God is good. Can somebody join me in saying that, that, that God is good? God is good. Let me continue to read. Next, verse 1 states that praise is due God because of his steadfast love endures forever. Steadfast. His, his steadfast, his unchangeable love, his, his, it does not change. It endures forever. The term steadfast love is based on the Hebrew word 
Hesed, a high set. This term is usually referenced as God covenant faithfulness and kindness. God's Hasset, Hasset, is, is, and let me read it again. This term is usually referenced as God coveted faithfulness and kindness. This is where, where we, God, God shower us, amen, with, with gift, with blessings, with grace. This word means that we owe God. We owe him. It's just like if, 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 amen, you do me a favor, and that's what grace is. It's, un, it's, unearned, it's unearned favors, stuff that we have not earned that God has given to us. This lesson said because, amen, God is steadfast. God is steadfast. He's unchangeable. He is faithful. He is perfect. Then because of grace that he has given us, we owe him praises. Because of his grace, we owe him praises. That's what this word is about. Uh, it implies a relationship between the two parties such that it's supposed to be returned from the original giver of Hasid. Therefore, as God is steadfast in his love to humankind, we are then to return Hasid through praise. praise. So this says we ought to praise God, everybody. The, the psalmist says in one place, everything that has breath, and that's Psalm 150, everything that has breath ought to praise God. Everything that has breath ought to praise God. Um, let, me, let me go a little further. Those who ought to praise God are those who have been redeemed, my Lord. At this juncture, given the various deliverances mentioned in the verses following the redeemed are those whom God has delivered, amen, from tragedy, travesty, darkness, and difficulty. Oh, man. Amen. Those who are delivered are to speak of God's goodness and deliverance. We are to say so. It is supposed that this specific instance in reference to those who have been gathered back to the homeland after the Babylonian captivity. Yahweh has brought them back from the four corners of the earth to the land that was promised their ancestors. They are, they are redeemed. You and I, you and I, if we accept the gospel, we have been redeemed. We have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And if we have been redeemed, then this says that we ought to say so. If, if you've been Amen. If you believe that Jesus died, shed his blood on, on Calvary's rugged brow for your behalf, then you accept the gospel message. You have been redeemed. And if you have been redeemed, this lesson says you ought to praise him. Say so. Say so. Let me, let me go to the second outline. I'm going to take too long this morning. Um, this is a very interesting lesson. Outline number two says deliver it from the desert wasteland, delivered from the desert wasteland. Psalm 107, verses 4 through 9. They wander in the wilderness in a solitary way. They find no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul, filleth the hunger soul with, with goodness. Now, this, this, this is why I said earlier, this could also be the deliverance from Egypt, from, from the Egyptian bondage. Here they are, we're talking about they wandered in the wilderness. That's the children of Israel. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found there was no city in the wilderness, no place where they could rest. In, uh, uh, amen. They was hungry and they was thirsty. And how many of you remember the fact when they got hungry, what did God do? Rain down bread from heaven. 
when they got thirsty, what, what happened? God gave them water from a rock. Amen. They owe God praises. Just like you owe God praises for laying down last night, for having a roof over your head. You owe God the same praises. We ought to praise him. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. In their trouble. That's what we do. And he delivered them out of their distresses. Let me read the, the, the amen. Mm. Let me read the Noah to this, to this outline, verses 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5 look like an obvious reference mm -hmm, to the Exodus event. Tradition holds that the Israelites wandered rather aimlessly in the wilderness of Sinai as they left Egypt and were on the way to Canaan. Even as they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years, God was the one who sustained them and ultimately brought them out by the leadership of Moses and Joshua. It is also possible that this wandering in the, is in reference to coming home from the exile, whereas we learn that most of the Israelites returned to their homeland traveling together. It should be noted that there would have been some who were lost on the way home. Mm. In any case, they became thirsty and hungry and cried out to God. God's response is similar to the empathy he expressed to the Israelites before commissioning Moses to the Exodus. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Exodus chapter 2, verses 23, 24, and 25. God then delivered them from that difficult moment that threatens to take their lives. This emphasis throughout these five verses is that they reach an inhabited town. They finally, let me pause, they finally got somewhere. Just think about it, and I'll keep reading. Let me just keep reading because this, this, this uh, uh, will probably say what I need to say. One might want to know why that is so. For ancient travels was an arduous and dangerous task, much more than it is now, particularly for those who were traversing a long journey. Hospitality was a necessity for survival in many cases. Keep in mind that there are no hotels or restaurants, and that's what I want to get to. Traveling, they are traveling. Picture in your mind, they are in the wilderness. Um, there's no city, no, 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 nowhere to rest, nowhere to stop, nowhere to spend the night. Um, it's just open, it's open wilderness. It's open wilderness. And, and, and they, are, they are traveling. Uh, whenever they cross somebody, then they had to depend on somebody's hospitality to help them along the way. Um, keep in mind that there was, most people, listen, listen to this, and this is in the wilderness. I'm back reading. Most people eat what they grow a slaughter, and there is no such thing as refrigeration. Traveling with supplies was limited to space, animal, and human power. Given these considerations, reaching a time where one could eat, drink water, rest, and be saved from marooners was essential. Therefore, for God to lead them to such a place was considered a mighty act of deliverance. God, for, for 40 days, for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. No, no where the rest, no town, no, no motels. No, uh, and the only thing they could get, just think about this, God had to sustain them. They didn't grow no crops, didn't have, they had livestock, uh, uh, but, but, but God had to, amen, feed them for 40 years. 40 years, 
and, 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 and it didn't have to be so. But because of their doubting, amen, God, they turned back into the wilderness and God said, amen, you spied out the land of Canaan for 40 days. But every day you were in the land of Canaan, I'm going to make a year. I'm going to leave you in the wilderness for 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. God took care of them. Listen, you and me, we've struggled. Our four pounds have struggled. Amen. We come up, amen, as the song said, on the rough side of the mountain. There have been some trials and some, some tribulations in, amen, in the lives of our parents and even in our lives. This, this song has said God delivered. God delivered. Amen. God delivered. Amen. He delivered the Israelites from the desert wasteland. He has delivered you and me from a kind of bondage. And, and now those in authority is trying to put us back in bondage again. How many know God is still on the throne? God is still on the throne. Amen. I don't know how, don't know when, don't know where, but as the song said, God's going to fix it. I believe he's going to fix it. Let me, let me finish reading this. Amen. They are to thank him for his steadfast love demonstrated in this way. God satisfies the thirst and the hunger. This verse is reminiscent of a beatitude in Luke 6 and 21. Jesus said, blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Given the similarity of the two verses and Jesus' propensity to quote scripture, he very well may be referencing the summons. It is God who gives food to the hungry and water to the thirsty. That thanks for God is that amongst being a deliverer, God is also a provider. How many know that, that God not only delivers, but he also, amen, he also provides. He is a provider. Yeah, he, he, I, I, I remember, and I'm, I remember growing up, my grandmama, it was a lot of us, a house full of folks. And there was time when, when, amen, you thought we didn't have nothing to eat. If a stranger came through town, my grandmama would somehow, amen, fix something for him to eat. And we wondered, the stranger going to eat everything. But then when it comes time to eat, somehow or another, I, I, God is a provider, brothers and sisters. God is, I don't know where, how she got it from, uh, uh, amen. But God provided. God provided. I was told it was 21 of us. 21 of us. Hallelujah. God is not only a deliverer. He delivered us from that kind of lifestyle where you could lay down the compares and, and uh, there was no ceiling in the house. It was just a roof. And if you look up in the law, uh, Dick and Rose, you can see snakes mm. in the law. God delivered. God delivered. Amen. Not only did he deliver, he also provided. Yes, May have been time when you couldn't eat where you want to or eat where you please, but God provided. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me go to this last outline. I, 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 amen. Mm. Yeah, let me do this last outline. Declarations about the truth of God. Psalm 107. Verses 39 to 43. Declarations. What in the world are declarations? What in the world are declarations? What in the world? Declarations about the truth of God. Amen. Declarations about the truth of God. Let's, let's look at declarations. Let's look at declaration. Um, declaration, declaration, declaration of independence. Declaration is a formal announcement. It's a formal announcement at the beginning of a state stated condition. That's what a declaration is. It's a formal announcement at the beginning of a stated condition. Let's read this outline so we can get out of this lesson. Again, outline Psalm 107, verse 39 to 43. Again, they are menaced and brought low through oppression, 
affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes, cause them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Declarations about the truths of God. Declarations. Amen. Announcement. Formal announcements about, amen, the truths of God, the stated condition. Let me, let me read this. Know it. Uh, I've got a few more minutes. Um, The summons end in an anticlimactic manner, whereas this portion of the sum instruct those who are wise to reflect on the never-ending love of God. Those who are atop the social ladder are contemptible before God. Let me pause. Let me pause. Contemptible. Those who sets high. Those who has had the authority, amen, to make laws and to change laws and to, to amen, to meet out laws. They, they, they are contemptible before God. And the reason I say they are contemptible before God is because of the word justice. Justice is not measured out equally. That's what God requires, amen, of those in leadership is that they, amen, do just to all men. This says, even, even back then, in, 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 in the days of old, in the days of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness, leadership, amen, was contemptible before God. This says, because of that, God allowed princes. Amen. Let me, let me finish reading. There are others who are diminished and made low. If not through the action of God, then mostly, certainly, his inaction. As this summons comes to an end, it reminds its readers that even as God is responsible for delivering many, there are others that God does not deliver. Mm. In fact, there are those whom God is liable for their humbling. However, God is liable for their humbling. However, it should be noticed that God only allows those to be brought low who have in some way displeased his will and thus their oppression is payment for their unrighteousness. Do I need to read that sentence again? Ah, hallelujah. Oh, however, however, it should be noticed. I'm reading that same sentence that God only allows those to be brought low who have in some way displeased his will and thus their oppression is repayment for their unrighteousness. Now let me, let me, let me pause. What God does, what God does, now God is a righteous God, he's a just God, and he will not cause it, but what he does, amen, he allows Satan. He allows Satan. And Satan is, 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 this is Satan's domain. He's on the loose. And, and God has allowed him and does allow him, amen, to bring about unrighteousness. This should be contrasted, I'm reading, this should be contrasted to the needy who are lifted high by his mighty hand. Mm. God raises the poor and the humble. Lift them Amen. With his mighty hand. The assumption is that those who are in need come to God in a spirit of humility. And because of his great compassion, he is moved on their behalf to cause their families to prosper. Amen. When we come to God in humbleness. That's what Peter said in, 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 in 1 Peter chapter 5. He says, humble yourself. 
under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Here it is, right here in this summer. Amen. He causes your family to prosper. This in itself is good news. God causes his people's family to prosper. This signifies that God causes good to come to those who serve him and even those who are connected to his servants. This is a reminder that we stand on the prayers of righteous mothers, fathers, and ancestors who have come before us and are now a part of our great cloud of women. This, this, this line says that many of us are living on the prayers of our ancestors because we, we, we've gotten where, amen, we, we don't pray no more. This says, this outline, uh, uh, this exposition says many of us are living on the prayers of our ancestors. I, I, amen. And thank God for the prayers of those old saints. My Lord, it is only those who are upright that can stand before God and do so with gladness for what he has done for the needy. Those who are upright are able to celebrate the good that God is doing in the lives of their neighbor. We should be able to rejoice with those who have been delivered from their distress. God calls us to stop wickedness and to jump in jubilance because of his steadfast love. What a lesson. What a lesson. Declarations. Declaration. Formal announcement. Formal announcement is, is de declaration. Amen? Amen? Application and review of the lesson. Real quick. Real quick. We can recount how we cried out to God and we were delivered. Psalm 107 and verse 6 says, They cried in their trouble, and he rescued them from their distress. It is comforting to know that God is strong in our moments of weakness. He is with us in times of trouble, and he will rescue us when our hearts grow faint and our spirits are weary. For this let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This psalm reminds us of all the magnificent ways God delivers us from trouble and difficult moments. For this, we should give him praise because he is good. Because he is good. The psalm for this lesson, I don't have the words, is I am redeemed. That's the, that's the recommended hymn for this lesson. I am redeemed. Um, live it. It takes Christian character to live a spiritual life. Character involves one total personality. The character of God's people is determined by how well we hear and follow Christ. By doing so, we can live God's way. Then there's a shared portion of this lesson. We need more to say, <clears throat> say, we need more say so Christians. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Not those who go around complaining and criticizing. As a Christian, tell others how good God is. He is good, but many do not appreciate his goodness in the world today. <clears throat> there are some who do not appreciate his goodness and find themselves warring with an omnipotent God. This week, share God's goodness with others. Tweet, share a post on Facebook, or make an Instagram post to let other people know about God's goodness. Amen. If God been good to you, and I'm looking at some of you, and know that God has been good to you, even those that I can't see. If you're yet alive, know that God has been good to you. If you had a place to lay down last night, know that God been good to you. Amen? Amen. So therefore, amen, you got something that you ought to praise him for. Amen? Uh, I shall be released. I shall be released as the subject of the lesson. God released us. Amen. He has released us from the bondage of sin and Satan through redemption. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. Good morning, sister and brother. 
I pray that this been lesson been a blessing in your life. I pray that you take it with you. Amen. And tell the world, amen, that I've been redeemed. And because I've been redeemed, I shall tell the world of the goodness of God. Amen. 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 1130, if not far from now, thank you for joining us for Sunday school. And if you, if you can and will, we have the same mode in the same place at 1130 for worship. Join us if you can. Most holy and gracious Father, we thank you for this time of study. We pray that this period of study has been a blessing in the lives of your people. That because of your word and, and amen, the ability that you've given us to share with others, that this lesson be beneficial in the lives of your people. Call those of us, especially those who've been redeemed, to tell the world that God, amen, is good. He's gracious and he's merciful. He's slow to anger and, and gives us, amen, grace beyond measure. Lord, bless our going out and our coming in. Be mindful of sick and shut in. It is in your name I do pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Thank you, brethren. Uh,